and all he's done here and um, up to this point. He's got so many lessons in here for, for men of how to be leaders, of how to be uh, strong, of how to be wise, of um, be discerning and just pray, God, that you would teach us through this, Lord. It's It's your word that transforms us. And so, God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help me to not be in your way. Uh, God, I just pray, Lord, for each of the hearts here, God, and that you would open our hearts, Lord, to receive from you. Uh, that we would set aside our, our preconceived opinions and understanding, but um, hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, I'm just going to read chapter 6. I didn't realize until today that um, I was had a conflict next Tuesday. So we will, uh, uh, Mr. Carson's going to fill in and finish 6 next week while I'm down at Hot Atlanta. We're looking forward to that, but um, let's read six. I'm going to read the whole way through. I'll probably teach about half of it. And Carson can do as he sees fit the following week. Uh, verse six. This is coming off of, surprisingly, Nehemiah chapter five, <laughs> where they're talking. He's talking about uh, the humility and the lack of greed that Nehemiah has displayed. He's now governor and he's he has the right to expect what a governor should have and yet he's he's not taken that. He's not taxed the people. He's not um, put an extra burden on them and so that's kind of where, where we leave off from chapter 5 just discussing that he has had these uh, these big feasts uh, but he's not taken a big share just for himself. He's had feasts where he had, had a lot of people there to uh, to take part in, but he hasn't been uh, been raising up just himself um, to to take advantage of the people and take advantage of the situation. And so we're at Nehemiah six here. Now it happened where Sanballat, <laughs> yet again, Sanballat, Tobiah, Jesh, Jeshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors and the gates. Then Sanballat and Jeshem sent to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought, but they thought to do me harm. So I sent a messenger to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? while I leave it and go down to you. But they sent this message four times, and I answered them in the same matter. Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It is reported among the nations, and Jeshem, and Jeshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel, Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall, that you may be their king, and you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult. Then I sent to him, saying, no such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, Shemaiah, son of Delaiah, son of Mahatabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, 
Should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired, and I should be afraid that I should be afraid and act that way in sin so that they might have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works. And the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who have made me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul. 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 How's that pronounced? You know? Elul. In 52 days. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things that they were very disheartened in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was done by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Je- Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came to them. For many in Judah were pledged to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, the son of Johanan, and his son Johanan had married the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. Also they reported his good deeds before me and reported my words to him. Tobias sent letters to frighten me. So, so the book of Nehemiah is, as we've seen, it's a book about rebuilding. It's not just a book about building. It's a book about rebuilding. Uh, something that was lost, something that was broken, something that was torn down. Uh, it's a book about establishing, reestablishing what was supposed to be. It's not that they're going to build a new work. They're going back to rebuild what was lost because of sin, because of laziness, because of turning away from the Lord, because of prideful hearts, because of whatever. They're going back to reestablish this is the Lord's uh, city. Right, and this, they're, they're, so they're, they're, they're reestablishing. It's all about the rebuilding of. Um, and I guess just, just a, a question I wanted to throw out at the beginning here is: Has what has sin destroyed in your life? What is what has sin destroyed in your life that you're now working towards reestablishing? And I'm not talking necessarily your sin, though it could be, because this wasn't Nehemiah's sin that caused this to be destroyed. It was generation before him so could be a, a, a parent could be a grandparent could be an uncle maybe not necessarily anybody that was that close but but there's a sin what what sin in you that, that that what is sin destroyed excuse me that you're in the process of rebuilding And understand that as you rebuild that, there will be a tax on that. It's not as though, you know, the enemy is going to stand around and as you rebuild that, oh, that, that's nice. That's, that's nice. Oh, that, that wall looks good. Oh, your faith is coming along really well. That's nice. No, the enemy is going to be attacking. And, and understand as, as those walls go up, as you get stronger in your faith, as there's fewer areas that are open for attack, he's going to be getting more desperate to attack, and he may attack harder. And, and you know, I think we see that here a little bit with uh, Sam Ballot. Is is that it starts off with now it happened when Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Jeshub the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall, and that there were no breaks left in it. Now, a parenthetical, he's saying, though at the time I hadn't hung the, the doors and the gates yet. So they, they heard, uh-oh, time is running out. There's, there's not many opportunities left to attack. 
where it's where it's unprotected. Now's the now's the time to try to try to stop this work. Now's the time to try to figure out how we move forward, keeping them weak. And that's a I think a good warning for us in that as we grow in the Lord, recognize that the enemy is going to keep trying to shove wedges in open spots kick something in there that makes it harder to close and harder to protect yourself in a certain area or you know just a, a, a think of it as a chink in the armor that you know you're weak there and there he may may be some sin part of you that kind of wants to leave that little door open because you can peek out that door every now and then and and feed your flesh and and so be aware of as you grow in the Lord as you grow in maturity that the enemy's looking to keep keep the the doors open that you don't have closed yet and it's a process it's a process there's, there's you know I, I liken this to you know you know we're told that the Hebrew scriptures are are basically a a, a true historical record but but can be used as a, an analogy of the Christian life right um, blank in the scripture right now but the scripture that's a, a new testament scripture points to that that you know the the hebrew what happened to the hebrews and was recorded was for us so that we to to show us uh the christian life and, and i want to say it's hebrews but i can't remember where it is right now huh i think it's first it is i don't know I couldn't. It's in that Bible thing. Hold on one second. I just want to look that up. First Corinthians ten. Yeah, the Old Testament examples exactly. Which which which. Uh, Verse was that? Oh. Happened for that. That's the one I was looking for. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages come. So that's First Corinthians ten, eleven. Um, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And so, you know, this is, this is kind of an ana- analogous. I think it is meant to be analogous for us for us in the Christian in our Christian walk, right? And and so, but also us as as you think towards as we age, as we step towards eternity, as we step towards you know whenever that last day is, it doesn't get easier. We we kind of have a, a mindset that our walk with the Lord should be easier, faith should be easier as as we get older, and you know there's a um, there's, there's, a, there's a quote from a man, Alan uh, Redpath, that the Christian life does not get easier as one gets older. And it's, I think some of this, it's, it's important for us to remember some of the sins of our youth that we struggled with may get easier because it, we have less testosterone pumping through our veins or whatever else it may be. But but th- those are traded for much more difficult sins to deal with pride pride in our you know, our knowledge you know pride in our our vast accumulated wisdom that we think we may have as as we as we get older and so it's it's an important thing that we continue um, allowing the lord to do that work in our own hearts don't we don't get to a point where all of a sudden this side of heaven we've made it we haven't made it till we're on the on that side of heaven. I think one of the things to, to continue to remember um, is if you are finding yourself surprised that you're still struggling with sin, you should not be. <laughs> it's You haven't, hey, I've all of a sudden been, I, you're going to still struggle with sin. And keep, keep trucking, keep going, keep... Uh, and, and even sometimes a particular sin that we feel like 
the Lord dealt with that back there. Why is that? Why is that here again? You know, and so, so be aware of those things. Um, verse two. Um, I had rebuilt the wall and there were no breaks left in it that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying come let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono but they thought to do me harm first of all if somebody asked you let's go meet in the plain of Ono probably not a good place (laughs) uh Bad joke I heard, heard from somebody else. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Anyway. Um, come let us meet together in the villages in the plain of Ono. And, and the way this comes off, it almost comes off in a friendly, come, let us meet together. Old buddy, old pal. Uh, and I think it's, in this given situation, it doesn't seem like it would be hard to be that discerning but we don't know the the pressures or how tired Nehemiah is of fighting this or building the wall and and the the the, we we become very tempted to look for an easy way out when we become tired whether it's physically tired whether it's mentally tired whether it's spiritually tired Oh, he wants to be my buddy now. Great. Let's go do that. And and this we, we we're not given that level of detail right here, but you know, it's important for us to discern. It's important for us to be aware of, the, of aware of the battle, aware of you know, what 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 relationships have happened in the past, what a given relationship happened in the past. That doesn't mean we don't forgive at a given point move forward but it's not like anything's changed here it's not it's not like San Ballot and crew came to him and said you know we're sorry for what we've done you know can we start a new thing here no they just they just trying a new new tactic let's come let us meet together friend neighbor but but he obviously but he obviously discerned that they meant him harm. Another quote from Alan Redpath here. Whether you are, you be a pastor or a teacher or evangelist or Sunday school leader or whatever your position may be in Christian leadership, let me say there will, be, there will always be those who are friendly to your face but plan your downfall behind your back. Beware the fawning, the flattering Christian who is always fluttering around you and who be- behind your back will be the first to rejoice when you go down. That's Christian leadership at a church. That's Christian leadership in your home. That's be aware of, you know, of... Particularly those who are flowery with their words are always, you're so wonderful. And you're, of course, we like people that tell us we're wonderful. So it's easy to fall for that. It's easy to understand that, that building up. But it's, be, beware, there's people for no other reason, just because they'd like to see it, they'd like to see you fall. And that's just, that's just the way to be aware, beware of that in yourself. If you, if you see, Somebody else being successful, be it business, somebody else that the Lord has raised up in ministry, and you and you are jealous or envious and don't like their position, and you uh, maybe smile in their face but talk behind their back. Be aware of that. That's there's not a single one of us in here who hasn't fallen to that temptation. I guarantee it. So be aware of that. Be aware of that you know desire and, and that evil temptation to want to tear down somebody else and we must be discerning as leaders and recognize that that is that is a potential that is something that those who call themselves your friends your allies could potentially be 
actually trying to do. Discernment is what? Able to see danger in a friendly, situ in a, in a friendly situ situation. Discernment is also being able to see good in a bleak circumstance. So a lot of times, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at discerning, or what I may call discerning, but I'm pretty good at seeing the bad in every situation. That's, that's a gift. That's why I said discerning. I'm, I'm good at seeing the bad in every situation. I, I can see the black cloud and anything. But there's a... Dis, and there is some of that that is discernment. You need to be able to look at, you know, look at a situation and recognize that there's, it's not always what it seems to be. But the other side of that is discerning is also recognizing the good in a bad, in a bad situation. Recognizing what, what the Lord may be doing in a bleak, this doesn't look good. I wonder, what's God, wonder what God's doing and looking for that. That's also discerning. So um, I think it's important that we recognize discerning is a, is a two-way street. It's, it's discerning is seeing a situation that, that from a spiritual standpoint. Discerning is seeing a situation that looks one way to our eyes. But the Lord impresses on us, this is something else. This is, and this is what he's doing here. He's saying, hey, hey, buddy, pal, let's meet in oh no. No, they, they, they mean for harm here. They, what they're saying is nice. We go on here to verse verse 3, and they're saying, I mean, eight. oops, jumping it. No, verse 4 here, and they ask over and over and over and over four, four times. This is this is not a short distance. They're, walk, they're walking or, you know, there's a long way that they're having to travel. Four times they go back and forth asking him, come on, just, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> Will you just meet us? Come on. But no, he's like, no, I'm busy. I'm busy. Verse 4. Verse 3, excuse me. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? Doesn't that kind of sound a little arrogant to be with? I'm doing, hey. I'm doing it. I'm doing a great work. <laughs> but why? Why is it not? I mean, if I'm over here making my widget at work, mothering, doing great work. If I'm, you know, what whatever it is you might be doing for work, whether it's, you know, building a house or whatever, don't bother me. I'm doing a great work here. That, there's a there's a bit of a if that's what we're talking about, but it, but here's a diff, why why he and why we can say that is when we're ser serving the Lord. It's not about us. It's about it's it's a great work because it's God's work. That's what makes it a great work, not my skill and awesomeness that I brought to the table. Though it's important to bring your skill and learning and understanding to, to bear on whatever the work God has given you it's not about you it's about God's work is great God's work is good and it, this this is what Nehemiah recognizes I'm, I'm doing what, yeah, God's, why would I come over there when God's told, told me to be here he told me to build this wall why would I be over there I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down why would I come do something less important and stop what is more important? Ouch. <laughs> Why would I do something less important and stop what is more important? The most important work we will ever do, the greatest work we can ever be involved in, is the work that God has given us to do. Whatever that is. Whatever piece of that it is that it is God has given you to do. We all know it as a body that we're to make disciples. That's but that could be sweeping, you know? Part of that could be sweeping here. Part of that could be fixing <laughs> holes in the roof or <laughs> whatever else we may be doing doing here. Right? But that's if God's called you to that, 
That's, that is, there's nothing that's greater than that. Romans 15, 10, 15, how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. We are to make disciples, which requires the gospel to go forth, which requires preaching to happen. For preaching to happen, there's got to be a sender. So there's people, there's the, uh, what I love about this verse is that it, there's people at every, at every part of the gospel going forth. There, there, there are those who are the, the front line, and I'm, not, and I'm not excusing any of us, we all should be actively taking and seeking opportunities to share the gospel individually. But there are, there are those that are the point of the spear that the Lord uses, that they are gifted for that one thing above all else, right? There, there are others that they're darn good at making money. And you know what? Making money is an important part about of, of, of the sending part. And that's not a, as long as you're doing as the Lord has called you to do in that and you're and you're you're generous with what God has called you to do there's nothing wrong with that use your gifts uh, for the work of the kingdom why should the work cease Luke 9 62 and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom who in here has never taken his hand off the plow? Was that? <laughs> Not there yet. So, I mean, according to the Lord's words, does nobody fit? We never were fit. We never were fit. It's all, it's by grace. But but the point being is that you know, we should be, we should be serious. Of, Jesus is serious about that serious about let's get to work and let's stay busy and let's do this it's not uh, we shouldn't be wasting time and, it, and it's uh, I just love how this how he says it. I'm doing a great work I can't come down there why should the great work I'm doing cease we're doing a great work we're, we're reaching the world with the only really good news there is right don't get tired of that, man. I'm speaking to me. I've been tired of that. Don't get tired of that. Let's not quit a the greatest work just for, you know, something less. Verse 4. But they sent me... But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Again, to think of, it's one thing to send an email four times, right? But it's another thing to pack the supplies and the people and the maybe, you know, camels and whatever else was involved in sending a message four times. I mean... There's no small feat. <laughs> That's, that was months worth of travel. And I, mean, I don't, don't exactly know, but that's, that's a long... They were trying to get his attention. They were trying to, hey, hello. I know you're trying to finish that over here. Hey, let's meet over here. Oh, no, no, no. And yet he didn't... Even he was faithful during that whole time. Whatever, Whatever that length was he was faithful and consistent he discerned at the beginning this was not good he didn't get sick of hearing it at one point fine fine we'll meet no, he was he heard from the lord no i'm not going to stop my work to meet them and they asked again no i'm not going to stop my work and they asked again no 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 i'm not going to stop my work and every time he said no And 
And I wonder what, I know for a fact, some distractions that I've allowed in my life. And I'm wondering, I am encourage you guys to think about what distractions have you allowed in your life. That you said at one time, no, no, no. And they came knocking again, and no, I'm not going to, no. And then they came knocking again, and well, I got a few minutes on my hands. Then they came knocking again, and then they didn't have to knock because they're there. They've been hanging out with you. What distractions? Are there distractions that are keeping you from doing all the work that you can for the Lord? I get it. Absolutely in my life. Absolutely. We need to be careful. Here we live in a, you know, Hollywood is a Hollywood is evil if you don't know they are, they are they are the point of the spear for the enemy they are very much about sending a message driving people away from Christ and yet how much time do we answer that doorbell that message hey hey let's go meet on the couch let's go meet forever and spend time talking spend time being distracted by the message I want to send you because Hollywood doesn't do stories anymore they do messages that they wrap stories around that are constantly trying to drive a wedge between us and Jesus between our kids and Jesus be aware of that be aware of that James 4.4, 4, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. This is not talking about going to make friends with people who are other That's not what this is talking about. This is the world. feeling weak in the flesh or strong in the flesh as it may be. Those are not, the world and God are not compatible. They're not compatible. Verse 5. Recognizing that, that if there's anything we can say for old Sanny, that guy is, is not a quitter. He just changes tactics. He just, well, that didn't work. Let's try the next thing. So here he is again. Then, then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before, the fifth time. This, this time he sent it with an open letter in his hand. And it was written. It is, re- it is reported among the nations and Jeshem. Oh, sorry. It is reported among the nations and Jeshem says. <laughs> and. <laughs> This is funny to me. And Jeshem says, "So I don't care what Je- I don't care what Jeshem says. It is reported among the nation, and Jeshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel, and therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king.'" So come, therefore, let us consult together. So he's trying to, you know, pressure him to meet. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's true, but root, word on the street is <laughs> everybody's saying, right? I mean, it's, he's, this is ridiculous almost. It's fake news. <laughs> Huh? Based on, he even admits the rumor. I mean, Jeshem, my buddy, says, he says it's true. <laughs> and then we hear these rumors, right? But. Right. The whole, per, this is, 
this is propaganda. Part, this is very much a propaganda campaign, trying to get other people to, to turn on. I mean, and you kind of see this throughout. There, he's very much running a propaganda campaign against Nehemiah. Huh? Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Collusion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely does. Absolutely does. And so what do we... When have I ever found myself using a tactic like Sam Ballot is using? And it, it's actually a logical fallacy done any logic stuff is is uh, argumentum oops oh, I forgot the name of the I just forgot the name of the It, it went. Do I have it in my notes? Appeal to the masses. Argumentum ad pop, populum. It's just appeal to the masses. When you, well, a lot, a lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are saying this. So, so you, when you're trying to convince somebody of something, you know, everybody's saying, it's just trying to convince them that they should do something. guilty of in my life that I've that I've done before is hey I don't have a great argument to, to make my point but yeah let me bring these guys into the art see a lot of people believe this me and these guys believe this so it, this is what he's trying he's, he's, he's just try, trying anything he can and be aware of that when when people try to, to rope in the masses as their as this is what we believe this, this is what everybody believes. There's a um, couple things on that. So the, so the rumor is most people seem to think you're building this wall to raise yourself up as king and to rebel against King Artie, right? You're, you're, you're trying to make a big name for yourself and kind of take over. A couple things to think about that, that when... when the most people think, or a lot of people are saying, or this, this is what I heard somebody saying, trying to bring somebody else into, into talking about, it, is the truth is not reliant on what the masses think or consensus. That's just, the truth is not democratic. <laughs> we need to vote on what the truth is. The truth is the truth, period. We need to vote on that. There's a blogger that I like to, like to read, Vox Day. Anyway, he's a, uh, he's, he uses the term often. Uh, in PAI, most people are idiots. It's, this is a reality. It seems very rude to me, but it's the reality. And sometimes you have to realize, depending on the subject, you're an idiot. You know? <laughs> so, so we need to be very careful. <laughs> that, that I'm so smart about everything, or I'm not, you know, being, being, uh, as though you know everything, or as though I know everything. The reality is, is we're, ve we're very ignorant. And I think as, as we mature as men, one thing that I've noticed, and I, I'll put that on me, is that the more I learn, Not a my little knowledge fucks me up, but wisdom. Man, I don't know that much. I'm seeing her glass darkly right now, right? So what everybody says, just because everybody says it, or everybody thinks it, completely irrelevant. What everybody thinks, even if you're part of that everybody right now, <laughs> even if your vote is part of that uh, vote, it, that's why it's. 
such a blessing to have this the word of God. This is the truth. Right? Points to the way, the truth, and life. But this, this is the truth revealed to us. And so therefore we can stand on this and know, I may not know much, but <laughs> I know him who does. If you find yourself trying to bolster an argument you're having by trying to point to others that think blank, blank, just don't. The, the, something I've heard in a, in a missional sense and sharing the gospel is, is the well, most, most people who are missional are always believe in God. I've mean, heard Christians share that as well. That means something. It just does. I mean, yes, that's true. I think it's true because Romans 1 tells us that you know what may be none of this may be manifest in all of right so that's true but that's not a valid argument just because everybody believes this doesn't mean does, does that make sense so and that's, a, that's just an example that I've heard that we use as Christians sometimes well most people believe, believe in God therefore no well, it's not, not that, that doesn't make it true Verse 8. Time we so far we're on so good. Go to the five. Then I sent to him saying, No such thing as you say, no such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. Here again we see, first of all, he knows what he's doing. He knows his heart on the matter. It doesn't matter what other people are are saying. He's saying it doesn't matter. You're inventing these in your heart. Not to mention, you got your best bud here to be one of your your, one of your witnesses of of those those who are saying it doesn't matter. No such thing that you say is happening. I'm not trying to be king. I'm busy doing a great work. That's that's all I'm doing. I've, God told me to do this. It doesn't matter what you think my my motives are for doing this. I'm doing a great work, and I'm busy about the Lord's work. And I don't care what you say about it. I don't care what you do about it. I'm going to continue doing the Lord's work. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying their hands will be weakened in the work and and it will not be done. In the tongue, we have the power of what? Life and death. Life and death. He's trying to speak death into, into what's going on. And prove. He's trying to kill this thing. He's trying to kill what Nehemiah has been doing in serving the Lord. They're trying to kill what the Lord's doing here. I guess my question for you and for me is what are you hearing or are you saying? Say hearing first. What are you hearing that is weakening your hand in the work? Are you listening to something that's weakening your hand in God's work? Whatever that is. You're not... You're not just saying, whatever. I don't, you can say whatever you want. I'm going to continue to do the Lord's work like Nehemiah did here. But are you listening to it? Not hearing, I'm saying, are you listening? And you're allowing it to weaken your hand. It could be, it could be your own flesh. Man, you're tired. Whew. I really don't have the time to get in the, wor- get in the Word this morning. You're just listening to yourself, you know. You, c- you can be the the one speaking that and also what are you saying that might be weakening somebody else's hand at the work and where's, where's Pastor David been right we can, we can somebody who's a you know, new believer
So we need to be careful. Are we, are we saying anything? Right? So be careful. We have to be super careful of the seeds we're planting in other people's hearts. Of how that's going to affect their desire to continue working hard for the kingdom.